welcome to Coastal Forage and with Craig Evans. Something different this morning. Uh, we had a mountain stream that runs off to the Paselli Mountains uh, in Pembrokeshire. Uh, hoping to get a few trout later on to uh, cook, cook on the coast with uh, the other things we're going to forage. And what I'm going to do is, just to show you, I'll, I'll come on a bit, is that I'm actually fishing for wild brown trout. And what I'm using is something called a spinner called a MEPS. And this. Uh, the size two silver and blue maps. So as I draw the, uh, the spinner through the water, this blade spins, which uh, imitates an injured fish and trout being carnivorous, they try and eat it. So uh, yeah, hope you come along and enjoy the journey. an average size edible trout from this stream no, not not like your uh, classic short stream um, chalk stream in uh, in the south of England but uh, it's an edible size it's roughly about 10 inches long so we'll, we'll take him and uh, eat him afterwards Yeah, so here's a here's a nice fat uh, wild brown trout, beautifully coloured. You can see the yellows and the golds in it. And uh, what we'll do later, we'll uh, after we dispatch it, we'll take it to the beach and cook it with some uh, coastal vegetables. And uh, I think we might do a, a cockle mussel and a clam sauce perhaps. Uh, so yeah, so uh, look forward to that. Very nice. Right then, so we've uh, finished fishing now. We've been uh, fishing for around about an hour and uh, John's been filming and doing a fantastic job. And um, we caught probably, I don't know, a dozen John with it? A dozen fish all together? Somewhere around there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we've got these three uh, to eat now and a couple of others to go back. So what we're going to do is, these, these nice wild brown trout, we're going to uh, come up with some kind of uh, nice recipe and I look forward to cooking these on the beach uh, later on. With the environment we are now, as you can see around you, it's, it's a sea of garlic. It's uh, coming to the end of spring. And lots of edibles here. So we've got plenty of garlic. We've even got uh, cleavers, also known as sticky willy. Uh, these are edible. Uh, but what I think we're going to do with the trout, I'm going to stir fry quite a few of these succulent flower stalks of the garlic because when you eat these they don't taste of garlic really they taste of a very very sweet spring onion and they're delicious raw but I'll be chopping them up later and, uh, and stir fry them with, uh, with other things and uh, mm, it's delicious absolutely delicious it's got a nice crunch it's succulent and really really sweet and with wild garlic, eat the flowers, the seeds, the roots, the leaves, delicious, all free and abundant. Right, I mentioned earlier that we're going to cook the trout with some uh, garlic flower stalks. Now this particular garlic here, because it's uh, a bit shaded, bigger leaves and the flower stalks here are quite big and chunky. So what we'll do, we'll harvest, I don't know, maybe a dozen of these and the next time you'll see these now will be on the beach being cooked. Right, so this is uh, what we've got now. Lovely thick succulent uh, wild garlic. And to show you the scale of it, so they're about, I don't know, 40 centimetres long, 14, 15 inches. Very nice. So, delicious. Look forward to that uh, afterwards.
old one. That's something you haven't seen in my videos before. This is something called uh, a greater pipefish. Remember the seahorse family? This is a, a small one. These actually grow to about you know a couple of feet long, 0.6 of a meter, say. And if you look at their snout. It's got a small, tiny snout that actually eats plankton and small invertebrates and things out of the water column. Very, very slow swimming. And if I turn it over, you can see the size of the scales on its belly. It's quite a... and it's a member of the, of the seahorse family. Nice little find that. We'll uh, put it back in the water to get on. There he goes. Right, we've come to this uh, rocky outcrop now, and what we're going to do is uh, pick some uh, delicious edible seaweed called pepper dulse. It's this. This is the actual seaweed. That's all it is. Very, very branching and frond-like. And we're going to use that in the recipes we're going to cook in a, in a couple of minutes. I'll just, uh, I'll eat some and I'll explain the taste. It's very, very aromatic and it's a cross between garlic, truffle and mild chilli. If you cook it, the, uh, the flavour goes, hence later on when we cook, it's going to be uh, used um, in the recipe at the last minute and sprinkled over. So, my favourite raw seaweed. Delicious. Right then, uh, so this is what we've uh, foraged and caught fishing today. Uh, it's only part of what it is. Uh, this is what we're going to be cooking in, in a short while. So, uh, in front of us, on this bed of edible uh, duckweed, uh, we've got some nice razor clams, a couple of nice fresh wild trout caught this morning, some nice prawns, uh, nice big cockles, some lovely juicy mussels, some razor clams. Uh, we've got this beautiful crunchy wild garlic, wild garlic stalks, and uh, Garnish then with primroses, rose hips and, uh, and clover. So um, in a short while you're going to be seeing what we cook with that. So uh, hope you like it. Right, I'm just chopping up the uh, wild garlic now into roughly about uh, two and a half centimetre or, or inch in stalks. I'm going to stir fry this uh, first of all. And this is going to be used uh, as an actual vegetable accompaniment. Apart from just uh, flavouring the, uh, the oil in which uh, I cook it in. Right, so it's uh, been sizzling away for a couple of minutes now and it's softened the, uh, the crunchy uh, wild garlic in the butter there. So we're going to stir fry some of these lovely prawns we caught uh, a short while ago. We stir fry these for, I, I don't know, two, three, four minutes. The idea being is that they'll, they'll be cooked, more or less cooked through when we add the rest of the um, uh, the shellfish, the cockles, mussels and, uh, and razor clams. So we'll just leave the stir fry in the butter there for uh, a little bit. Turning pink already. Lovely. Just pull, pull one out to eat now and uh, explain a little bit about the prawns. Yeah, okay, right. So, these are our common UK British prawns, they're red hot, <laughs> um, they're actually, scientific name is Palmeon cerritus, and they call that because they've got, at the front of it, it's really hot by the way, at the front you can see this sharp spike and cerritus because it, the edge of the prawn is actually serrated, so you can move quite easily that way, but when you move that way, it's quite sharp, which is a protection from when it then might get eaten by fish. If that hurts and spikes the inside of a fish's mouth, it's going to spit it out. And uh, yeah, so lovely animals. So I just show you how to peel it. You take off the head, and if you get a prawn like this, nice and warm, you squeeze this. Eat that, delicious. And then. You can peel off the outer shell or skeleton, and, and there you go. One 
perfect, delicious, wild uh, West Wales Pembrokeshire prawn. Steaming and it's been stir fried in wild garlic butter. Mm. Absolutely delicious. So I just, uh, just put the prawns on the wild garlic vegetables. There you. Okay, leave those there nicely and we get the trout going. Yeah. Just starting to bubble away. So we put one in there and one in there. We just fry those for a minute or so. Beautiful wild uh, Welsh Pembrokeshire brown trout. Uh, which we know because when we clean them they've been feeding on uh, stone flies of all things in, in, under the uh, which live in the rivers so uh, good good healthy fish from a healthy environment they don't take much cooking at all once the flesh is white uh, they're done very easy to uh, overcook uh, wild trout and it looks very nice nice and crisp lay that one on there and the other one, put them on there. So we saw these being caught earlier. And some some of the, the garnish there, the rose petals and the primroses. Yeah, this little rose petal there. All that's left now is to pour over the reduced sauce. There we go, so we'll put that over the top there. Concentrated seafood flavour that is. One there and one there. And voila! How's that? Not bad is it for the for the day out? Yeah, tell the good boy, he wants a share as well. And uh, doesn't want to be left out of the action. So we'll try some of the uh, some of the food now on here. So just move across and just take the skin off uh, the trout there and uh, cut it off. Lovely. Look at that. Mm. It's just melt in the mouth and so sweet and moist. Delicious. Mm. And, that, and that reduced sauce goes nice with it. Yeah. Just the other one then. So all you do is just peel off the skin. That's what's called the lateral line in there. So so all you do like most fish you just take off that away from the backbone. And uh, there you go. Hmm. Outstanding. We've uh, cooked a few mussels today and uh, that's what normal mussel looks like. Cooked in, uh, in and stir fried garlic and uh, with the rest and prawn juice. Hmm. That's nice. But this one, it's actually got a bit of a an interloper in there. That tiny crab is a pea crab. Lives inside mussels. The same way as hermit crabs live inside uh, periwinkle and whelk shells and things. So that's it. So it's been in there, spent most of its life in there. And what it does it actually uses the inside of the mussel the same way as um, hermit crab does, like I say, for protection. And this one was a female. You can see the eggs in it. But what it does, it's um, in there. It doesn't harm the mussel much, but it steals a bit of its food now and again. So, uh, yeah, all part of nature. Lovely. Well, thank you for watching that. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself uh, today. We've been up into the up in the mountain streams, we've caught some nice, uh, nice trout. Cooked them here along with some prawns and uh, other things. I uh, hope you enjoyed the cooking part of it. I certainly did. It was uh, absolutely delicious, uh, if I may say so. And uh, yeah, if you uh, want to come along on the course, you're very welcome. You can find out about me on my website, which is www.coastalforaging.co.uk, and you can follow me on Facebook. Uh, Instagram and my YouTube channel, which is this one, Post of Forage Jimmy Craig Evans. So, uh, yeah, come along and uh, I hope to see you next time.